Hey everybody, it's Albert, and yes, it's time to talk once more on Comet Elenin. And I, some, some of you may remember I made that video stopping the Comet Elenin nonsense. Of course, I knew it wouldn't stop the nonsense. I was just looking to get a charge out of people uh, who were into this sort of paranoid fantasy kind of thing and, and just see what their reaction was. And of course, I got them, and, and, and I got major reactions, and, and I want to share some of them with you. And it's, it's really... If you look at the, and I'll, I'll, uh, this video will be a response to my original video, so you can go take a look at that, and particularly take a look at the comments section, because it is a riot. These people are funny. I mean, they're just literally hilarious. Uh, some of them are a little crazier than others, and some of them just may be confused. So, uh, what I want to do here is just some of the better things to talk about in terms of Comet Ellen and, and, and supposedly what it's about or whatever. And, and, and I, I want to, since I, basically, I, that first video was intended just to see what these people would say. And, and of course, it, it succeeded. Um, so now I, what I'd like to do is just sort of go through some of these comments and point a few things out and, and, and see if they can actually come up with something reasonable. Um, or come to a conclusion. Just point things out. Now, the, 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 some of them, like I said, are just totally off the wall. Um, one, one comment I received, and, um, uh, which was probably the... the uh, <laughs> I, I would say it was the least impressive of all of them. <laughs> Uh, it was it was very a very strange one. It was by a user Dirty D eight oh five. It begins, God, you're an idiot. Ex and then he says, explain why the NASA buzz room was shut down the day after a scientist there revised the trajectory to point zero zero four astronomical units. For those of you who don't know what's what this is referring to is I pointed out that Comet Allen and would not in fact come any closer than twenty two million miles, which is not that much closer than Venus, and certainly not nearly as close as the moon. Um, and he's saying why the NASA well the NASA buzz room, which was like this publicly open room, was shut down because of idiots like this guy, frankly. Um, it was shut down because there were a lot of crazy people in there spreading a lot of nonsense and NASA didn't want to be associated with it because they people had called up and had pointed out, wait, what's this doing on a NASA website? This this crackpot stuff that and and, and that's why basically more than likely it was shut down until they were they, they, eventually it'll probably come back with, but with some better controls on it. Um, I mean, because basically people like this. Now, what's really funny it, with this guy, he, he goes on to say, do you understand the physics of it, morons? No, so shut up. Well, obviously he doesn't, because what's funny then is he points to a website, which I will give a link to, and talks about this being where the the uh, astronomer adjusted it to 0 .04 astronomical units, which would be much closer. No, he didn't. This is what he's pointing to. His website that he pointed out, what it says is that the Stereo B spacecraft came within 0 .04 astronomical units, not the Earth. I mean, this guy is just like a total idiot. He can't even read the website he's pointing to. And in fact, it says right in there, it won't come any closer than 22 million miles. And in fact, it points out in this page that he pointed to that the, um, stereo, that the stereo B spacecraft was five times closer than Earth would ever be, and there was no appreciable effect whatsoever. End of story. So obviously, uh, we all kind of know who the idiot here is, or the moron, or whatever. Um, this guy's just totally... I mean, he can't even read. Uh, well, certainly, if you look at his comments, you'll see he can't spell either. But uh, basically, that's what we're dealing with. People who don't understand physics, as he tries to pretend he did. Um, and and uh, it, that's, that's kind of like the bottom of the barrel. Uh, when we move uh, you know, to, to people who may just be confused... And, and a lot of the attention was on the uh, alleged predictions of, or alignments of earthquakes. Now, what this is all based upon is something, uh, the JPL widget um, for Common Ellen, and basically it's, it's, a, it's a program, that, like a little thing that you can see where Ellen would be. Now, a few things about this. In fact, I'll give a link to the, the JPL widget, um, and 
The first one is it says right, as you'll see, right under where it says orbit diagram on this, once it loads, it'll say, it'll say make sure you have Java enabled. I'll assume those watching this do. Um, it's, and it then states, the applet was implemented using two body methods. And what that means is it considers, in this case, like just a, two bodies interacting rather than the entire solar system. Um, it's, using two, it's, it's a much simpler uh, configuration. It says it's using two body methods and hence should not be used for determining accurate long-term trajectories over several years or decades or planetary encounter circumstances. So it tells you right in the, this applet, which is the one that everyone's using to predict these a lot, to say this is going to align, it tells you don't use it for planetary encounters because this thing is not necessarily that accurate. Um, it's, it's so. For, for those purposes. So right away you've got an issue here, but you've got a bigger issue. You see this trajectory, okay? See, the, now let, let me explain. What they're saying is, well, this maybe isn't really a comet, but something more and more massive like a brown dwarf, a brown dwarf or something like that. Now, let me explain, and, and here's, the, here's the, the kicker, what they don't, what they don't get, is that um, this trajectory that's used in this, pro, in this applet is used assuming Elenin, in fact, is, n is nothing significant. It's used basically assuming it's a couple kilometer across piece of ice and rock, and that's all there is. And it just uses the physics of that to predict where it'll, go, where it'll be next, yeah, based on observations. Um, and that's pretty much it. And, and there's really nothing else to say. It's, it's assuming the sun's gravitational force is really the only determining factor here, that this thing is so insignificant it really adds nothing. And so something like a brown dwarf coming into the solar system would have, would have an entirely different trajectory or something, any, no matter what it was, that's much more massive, would have a completely different trajectory and hence the whole thing would be irrelevant if that were the case. If you're going to use this applet as to, to predict alignments, well, then you're it, by using that applet, you are admitting it is an insignificant piece of ice and rock, and hence its gravitational force couldn't possibly have any effect on earthquakes whatsoever. Uh, so there's right away they, but they don't get this, and I and I a couple of people I've had to say this three, four, five times. Look. You're using this applet. The applet assumes Elenin isn't that impressive. Um, you can't you you can't say it's aligning because if it were massive, the trajectory would be completely different. Um, the other thing is this thing has gone through a major part of the solar system. I mean, it's basically looped through and it's coming, it's heading out and has no appreciable effect on anything. If this were a brown dwarf or some other such body, some other massive body, it would have perturbed planetary orbits, it would have done lots of things, it didn't. What it is, is simply a piece of ice and rock. Now, um, as for the earthquakes, well you know what, These earth a lot of them are like on the ring of fire, earthquakes happen there, a lot, they really do. Maybe you don't hear them, maybe um, in this particular sequence, more of them were in populated areas than might be normal, but it's still, earthquakes happen all the time. Really, they do. Just People just notice them when they happen in populated areas. So, sorry, uh, Elenin has had nothing to do with earthquakes. And, and, and this, this, to me, would be really amusing. Um, because you have like the, the people who think it was caused by common Elenin, uh, arguing with the people who think it's caused by harp. Um, and then, of course, you have the people following Richard Hoagley, you know, the face on Mars guy, who thinks Comet Elenin is actually a spaceship. So then I guess you could probably unite them, maybe. If you get someone who's a real crackpot, who could say, well, it's actually um, a spaceship that's flying by, but it's causing the earthquake using harp rays. There, 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 there's a conspiracy theory for you. Let's go run. Let's see if that one spreads. And by the way, right now it's, it's September 27th, and for all the people who thought something horrible was going to happen on on um, the 26th, you're wrong. Sorry, I'm still here. Um, 
Uh, but I'll, 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 I'll update in a few days, in a few days to a week, and 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 just to see if there's any more reactions or if if people have another doomsday date for something to happen. We didn't, but we, you know, we didn't have any major earthquakes as far as I know. Um, certainly no pole shift, uh, which was one of the other things, and it's just nothing happened. And no, um, sorry guys, uh, school's out. Catch you later. Thank you very much for your time.